Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so Attack on Time Chapter 116 came out about two days ago, and dudes, I really like this chapter. I mean, I like, I really love this chapter for two main reasons. Number one, it officially started up the Marley invasion. Like, the cat's out of the bag now. The Jaw Titan openly attacked Aaron, like by bursting out of the ground. So that invasion has officially started. There's no point. In the, there's no point in the genie back in the bottle on that. And number two. It gave us some good insight on two characters that I actually been kind of interested in seeing what's going on in their heads, which is basically Gene and Peek. Now, usually I'm not really all that interested in Gene, and he's not really a character that I usually do care that much about. But after seeing what he did in this chapter, after seeing how he reacted to all the information he found out in this chapter, I'm actually kind of really liking the character development that they're pushing forward for him. And because of that, you know, I'm actually going to start off with basically talking about Gene's portion of this chapter. Because to me, this might actually be the most important, despite what happens later on, like I said, with the invasion officially starting and Aaron getting attacked by the Jaw Titan, I think this is the part of the chapter that actually has the most meaning in it. So basically, in this part of the chapter, we have Jean, Connie, Mikasa, Armin, Nikolai, the chef who was actually in love with Sasha, and basically a whole bunch of other Marlegians who are in other soldiers who are being held captive at this point. Basically, they're all in jail, and they're kind of... It's, it's mostly just Connie, Jean, Mikasa, and Armin, obviously the main crew talking about with the situation and we get to see exactly where everyone is emotionally and mentally in this part of the chapter for one instance we see connie he is still gun ho about basically taking aaron out he we can see that he's still reeling in guilt and anger for towards aaron about what happened to sasha about her death and the part he played in it because of the fact that basically despite my initial thought that connie and sasha during the four-year time skip had kind of got romantically involved Obviously, we find out that didn't happen because she was seemingly romantically involved with Nikolai. We still know that Connie deeply cared about Sasha like she was his own sister. Like, Connie was as connected to Sasha as, I would argue, Armin and Mikasa were originally connected to Aaron. So the, so the fact that she died and that Aaron not only played a part in her death, but seemingly has no remorse for the fact that she died, has really put him in a spiral of anger and depression and just wanting to get straight up revenge on Aaron. So no matter what happens in the situation, especially the fact that Aaron is seemingly openly betraying them, his long time, his long time friends, Connie has no remorse for him, and that basically says no matter what happens, Aaron has to die at this point. We can see that Armin's obviously still depressed by what happened between him, Aaron, and Mikasa, and we can see that he's still, while he's mentally thinking logically right now and trying to basically assess the situation, we can see that he's still trying to come to terms with everything that Aaron revealed to him a few chapters ago. So because of that, that's really impeding on his ability to think and actually strategize, which is Armin's main like main point on being on this team, is that he's a strategist. So the fact that he is basically still in shock or still so depressed by what Aaron revealed to them that he can't really think straight is really showing on his character. And then, of course, Mikasa, she is still in denial and kind of in shock with basically what Aaron said to her about the fact that she is basically a humanized Titan and that the only reason why she has any feelings for him is because humanized titans basically devote themselves loyally to one person. And that is the only reason why she has any connection to Aaron. Because when he saved her life when they were children, she mentally imprinted on him. And that's what activated her abilities. That's what made her into such a great warrior. And that none of those feelings that she has for him are true and genuine. And you know what, as a just quick aside, while I do believe Aaron was telling the truth about the whole humanized Titan thing, because that's a great explanation as to why Mikasa and Levy are so skilled and so gifted at fighting and killing Titans and basically fighting in general, I don't believe he was telling the truth about the whole imprinting thing, simply because of the fact that we see Levy doesn't really have anyone who he's imprinted on, and he's actually as skilled, if not a little bit more skilled, than Mikasa is. Now, you could argue that maybe he was imprinted on Erwin, but if that's true, then by the way Aaron explains it, there's no way that Levy would have let Erwin die in order for Armin to survive and become the new Colossal Titan. Everything inside his, everything about his imprinting would have forced him to fight tooth and nail until he died for Erwin to come back to life and become the new, to become the new uh, Colossal Titan in order to save his life. So yeah, because of the fact that Levy gave in and let Erwin die in order for Armin to survive, I kind of believe that that had the whole like, imprinting thing is bullshit if not if it's not bullshit if it's not 100 percent bullshit then it's not permanent or it's not you know all powerful basically you can get past it or suppress you can basically unlock your own feelings and own emotions to suppress it as we saw with what levy did and obviously i could argue that maybe mikasa did the same thing that maybe she was imprinted and basically 
divulges to Aaron because of her abilities activating at a young age, but over time it became genuine feelings. But anyway, back to the main topic of this whole entire chapter. When we see the three of them and how they're reacting to the situation about Aaron's betrayal and the reveal of what's going on, the only person we see in this entire group rationally thinking throughout the entire chapter is Gene. Gene, this, Gene kind of is the only person at this point who is thinking rationally. He's not letting his emotions get to him. And he's the only one who basically throws in the argument, what if everything Aaron's doing is just a trick? Gene basically asks Armin the reason why Aaron hit him. And when Armin tells him what exactly happened, the fact that uh, Aaron, well, he doesn't exactly go into detail, but he basically tells him that Aaron hurt Mikasa with his words. So Armin hit him and then Aaron hit him back. Basically, Gene says, well, honestly, that there's some meaning behind all of this. Because if there wasn't any, if he is of sound mind and Aaron's thinking very clearly right now and he actually is trying to betray him, then what would have been the reason for him to even go through all this? What would have been the reason for him to basically berate and basically break down the relationship the three of you have had if there wasn't some secret meaning behind all of this? And that's actually true. That's actually something that you really have to think about because of the fact that there was no real reason for Aaron to do that, to basically break the relationship that the Raynham had if you truly was just planning on going forward with the plan. Literally, all you would have had to do is basically lock them up and keep them out of his way so that they couldn't interfere with his plan. But instead, he actually chose to have a meeting or have like a sit-down talk with Armin and Mikasa and basically purposely break up their relationship so that he could go forward more as a villain and that they would learn to either not care about him anymore or straight up hate him. And this is the reason why I say Gene's the only one really thinking clearly because of the fact that, like he said, if Aaron's plan was basically just to go for, if Aaron really was planning on betraying them, there was no reason for him to have the conversation with Mikasa and Armin. And then on top of that, and then in the very next scene, we see Yelena show up with uh, that black guy who I, I don't know why he's the only character. Like, seriously, dude, you are the only character whose name I can't remember. I don't know why. I don't bother looking it up either when I ever do a video. So I, I just don't know what's going on with this character. But anyway, she showed up with him. And the friend of Nikolai who actually betrayed them for to Yelena in order to basically gain favor with her and basically, I guess, somehow became her underling in the chapter. She shows up and instead of attacking her verbally like Nikolai and uh, Connie do, he basically tries to gather more information from her. And you know what? Yelena actually freely gives up the information. She tells Jean, Connie, Mikasa, Armin, and everyone else who's in that cell exactly what Aaron and Zeke's plans are. Of course, she does this after she ends up shooting the ex-friend of Nikolai in the head for Batman with Sasha, which I think this whole po- the whole point of that scene, I think the whole reason why she did this was because of the fact that this guy, she she had to have known, because we've seen that Yelena and Zeke and all of them are basically very calculating. She had to have known that basically by bringing him there, it would, start, it would basically enrage Nikolai. He would berate him for basically betraying them. And then in turn, in order to show his, in order to show his resolve and his like, devotion to Yelena and their cause, he would badmouth Sasha in front of them. Then that would give her reason enough to kill him and basically show to Connie, Jean, and all of them that basically while she is currently going against them, her, Aaron, and Zeke do ultimately care about the Eldians and actually are on their side. So she basically tells them what the plan is that basically after Historia's child is born, they're going to euthanize all Eldians that way no more children can ever be born. And then pass on the Valentine abilities from Aaron to someone else to someone else until Historia's child comes of age. Pass it on to them and then let them live out their lives as a founding Titan. That way in the last few years of the Eldian existence, they can live in peace without worrying about anyone coming to basically mess with them. Because the founding Titan will still be there to control all the Titans inside the walls to defend them. And once their plan is revealed and we can see exactly how much Elaine actually believes in the plan, actually kind of idolizes Aaron and Zeke as kind of messiahs, we see Armin cry a little bit and start to, he starts to cry and he tells Elena that he had no idea that her plan was so pure or that her belief in her devotion was so pure. And I think this is going to be a, con- this is going to be a confusing moment for a lot of characters or for a lot of readers because you could basically, the way the scene is portrayed I can see a lot of people thinking that maybe this is Armin kind of agreeing with their plan, but I don't think that's the real intention of the scene. I think the reason why Armin is crying in this part, and keep in mind, Armin is a character who always shows his emotions on the sleeve. Basically, I think the reason why Armin is crying in this moment is because he feels guilty or he feels like he he's upset with himself for basically thinking 
that Yelena and all the other recruits or and all the other volunteers are evil because of their actions. Because in this chapter or in the scene when she finally reveals what's going on, he can see in this chapter that she truly believes what she's doing is for the betterment of all Eldians and for the betterment of the world in general. And because of that, he can tell that she's no she's not really the evil person that he actually believed she was. And that's the reason why he's crying, is because he feels saddened by the fact that he actually did believe that. In this chapter, we also get to continue the whole situation going on with Aaron, Peek, and Gabby. And basically, while Peek is holding Aaron at gunpoint, she tells Gabby to pick up the rifle of the soldier she had just killed in the last chapter and point it at Aaron. And at first, basically on how long it was taking Gabby to pick up that gun and pointing it at him, I thought this was going to be a situation where she betrays Peek because of the fact that Aaron is holding basically Falco hostage. But instead, she actually does point the gun at him. But Aaron basically calls her bluff in this chapter and says that, hey, you can't kill me. Because your objective or your job or your role is to regain the Founding Titan. And if you kill me, then that's it. You won't be, you won't get it. You'll fail your mission. And you'll basically lose faith with your Malusian overlords. So you can't kill me. And this is actually the really interesting part of this chapter. Or what actually is really interesting about this scene in this chapter. It's basically once Aaron calls her bluff. Peek drops her gun, tells Gabby to put her gun down. And basically reveals to Aaron that she actually wants to join up with him like she wants Aaron to use his founding time ability to basically eradicate all Marlesians from existence and her reason for this is because of the fact that she knows that the Marlesians are bullshit like when Gabby tries to argue about how Peek is betraying them the same way Zeke did she says no I'm not betraying the Marlesians did you really like she basically berates Gabby by saying did you really believe that the Marlesians would ever make us honorary Marlesians and that we would ever get out of that internment camp is all bullshit. And basically her reasoning for betraying them is because of the fact that in the last few years she has left, she wants to free her father from that internment camp and show him a better future. And you know what's so cool about this whole situation is the fact that Peek's not exactly lying. She's kind of basically telling the truth to Aaron and Gabby in the situation. Because alright, even though we find out at the end of the chapter that she's basically just leading Aaron into a trap, so that the Jaw Titan can eat him and to gain the Fountain ability so they can take it back to Marley. Ultimately, she reveals to Gabby at the end of the chapter that everything she said is true. She has no love for the Marley and she hates them and basically wants to eradicate them. And she wants to basically pass on a better future for her father once she's gone because she knows that she's going to be leaving her father alone once her time as a, as a car Titan is up. But... Even though she has no love for the Marlesians, even though she wants to free the Eldians from their control and from the internment camps, she can't betray her comrades, both Marlesian and Eldians, the soldiers that she's fought wars with on the front lines for her entire time as the, as the Cartitan. She has love for them as, like, basically they are her second family. And because of that, despite that, she wants to use the Founding Titan abilities to wipe out all the Marlesian overlords, or basically all the ones that are suppressing or oppressing the Eldians. She can't bring herself to betray her friends and allies. And we basically end the chapter with the Jaw Titan attacking Aaron, basically only chopping off his legs while Aaron turns into his attack Titan form. And then we see basically the blimp showing up with basically Reiner and all the other uh, Marlesian soldiers and uh, I think Falco's brother Colt's there as well. Basically, they're all coming in to officially start the invasion. And you know what? I actually really like, like I said, I really dug this chapter because it gave us some good insight to Peek and Gene about what's their situation. Like, Gene. We know that he truly, at this point, does not believe that Aaron is betraying them and that he thinks that there is some kind of secret plan that Aaron is going to enact. Which, like I said, I also believe that Aaron's not fully betraying them and actually doesn't really plan on going forward with Zeke's euthanizing plan. And with Peek, we see that even though she does not truly trust the Marlesians, she doesn't believe in them and actually wants to basically betray them, she, despite her anger and hatred towards them, would never betray her own fellow soldiers. And that's some real insight to the character that we had never seen before. But that's pretty much all I had to say about the chapter. That's pretty much all for the review. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, comment down below with your thoughts and theories. Follow me on Twitter at, at Manga Archives. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.